Anyone can now learn anything from anyone at any time. My name is Angela Rivera, and this is my story. <laughs> My name is Shannon O'Donnell. I am a travel writer and a blogger. I've been on the road for about seven years now. And I also, I traveled with my niece because I did all of this traveling. I took my niece on an adventure through Southeast Asia for seven months homeschooling. I homeschooled her for the entire school year, but seven of that was traveling throughout Southeast Asia. I was living in Southeast Asia in 2011 and I called home actually on Easter and my family and I talked about how great the culture and how easy it was. I really enjoyed the Thai culture and the language and my niece at the time, she was 10, she was going to be 11 soon and we had talked about the fact that she was transitioning to, into middle school the following school year and that it might be a really great opportunity for me to bring her to Asia with me where I knew the culture I'd been there for about a year at that point and perhaps to, to school her so at that point I didn't really know what I was getting into but the idea being to take her to Asia and figure out how we would do her education from there. When I found out I was going to be traveling, I didn't want to go at all because, um, oh, I have my best friend here and I was like really emotionally attached to her. And also, like, I think at the time I was just scared of change. Like, I had never been, like, really even out of Florida before. So I just didn't think, like, that me going out of a different continent would even be, like, fathomable. It took her a while to warm up to it. We started homeschooling in August, like when the school year would have started, and we spent about two months getting the schooling under under our belts before we actually left for Asia. And all that whole time, she wasn't a super big fan of this idea of schooling from home. But once we got to Asia and we were visiting temples and we were doing all of these alternative learning and integrating that into the classroom, I think she was a lot more understanding of like perhaps why this had been, why as a family we had decided to make this a part of her education. I think my aunt just wanted me to give, like wanted to give me a different perspective of life, like to show me that Florida and like the family I was raised in isn't all there was to life like there's a lot more and there's a lot more opportunities outside of the place that I was born and raised in and there's different cultures different religion different attitudes people have like and we wanted to to create this sort of globalized child. One of the things about surviving in the new world is being able to work with people from all over the world. The internet has changed the way that jobs work. I did a lot of research when I first decided, when as a family we decided I was gonna homeschool her, it still fell on me to homeschool her. So there are a lot of communities out there, um, some secular communities, which was our focus. But in general, as soon as I figured out that the state of Florida has something called Florida Virtual School, FLBS, that was our main goal. So from middle school onward, FLBS lets you take whichever classes you want. You can pick and choose from the core classes to sometimes they even have gym or some of these other electives. And you have a Florida public certified teacher who's teaching the class and it's completely online. They use Blackboard and Educator inside of their system. And this gave me the confidence. When it comes to homeschooling, because I was like homeschooled online, um, I mean, definitely you have a lot less of a social life because you're not really with people, you're always like online, but when it comes to like, it was a lot easier because 
you can go at your own pace and it made it easy for me to travel because I was always like up and going somewhere and also um, like if you didn't do well on an assignment you could just do it over again so my sixth grade year I had straight A's like it was pretty easy compared to that traditional school year. We also used a blog, so I'm a writer, and one of the things I really wanted to level her up with was her not only reading comprehension, but her, her writing skills. So she shared a blog, we talked about her goals, and she wanted other kids to know what it was like to visit these places, and that also got her researching and figuring out what she needed to tell them about the temples we were visiting and things like that. So really, I started it because she had her own, and I was like, oh, well, she's known like commonly known for hers so maybe i should start mine and also like i didn't know a lot of people my age who were on the internet and like tracking around traveling because not many 11 year olds really to say that they had the opportunity to, to travel around like southeast asia so really i mean i did it because i wanted people to see my experiences and i wanted people to know how i saw traveling and also because like I thought that if I took after my aunt, then that would be like the coolest thing ever. She thrived. Like we spent the first six weeks of the seven months, you know, really struggling, trying to figure out how she could do that. But if you think about six weeks being the learning curve for her to learn how much work she liked to do in a day, how her schedule of, well, we'll you know, I think twice a week, every other day, like, you know, with a really long work day on Wednesdays, she would then say, maybe we could go visit some temples or maybe we could take a cooking class to kind of break it up. Like she learned that about herself. And I think that's pivotal. You know, that's as, a, as an adult, something, a skill we need. And it's not something that I learned myself until later in high school when they're throwing so much work at you that you just have to sort of figure some of that out. But at sixth grade, she was able to do it and the learning curve was not huge in the grand scheme of things. I think that going to Asia and traveling with my aunt was amazing. Um, that definitely put me in a, like, in a place where now like my mind is more open and I'm not really scared like if someone's like let's go on a plane to Uruguay I'd be like let's go right now so I mean definitely it changed my perspective and my mentality okay so I went straight from fifth grade which is you know you have one teacher um you have all the same friends pretty much kindergarten to fifth grade so that was really easy and then since I was homeschooled for sixth grade um, I mean, it's like I forgot how to really talk to people. I didn't have a lot in common with people because I had been out of the country for a while. So when I got back to middle school, I, um, in seventh grade, I didn't know how to dress. Everyone dressed differently than me. Um, I didn't like use the same slang as everybody. Like a lot of the time people talk, I feel like I don't know what you're talking about. I used to literally say, please speak properly because I don't know what you're saying. None of my niece's friends have ever been homeschooled like this or schooled like this. And so there was a resistance to this idea initially because it was new. And so once she learned that she could help control and shape it, it really made a difference in her ability to uh, adapt to the idea and enjoy it. She needed the internet not only for the work she was doing with me, I needed it for my work, but that was sort of the basis. That's how I taught her how to research. I'm really big on using the internet, using all of these resources that we have at our fingertips. Not just me showing her where this information is, but teaching her how to find it herself. Like if she wanted to write about a blog post telling kids about when we were in Myanmar, about you know their culture and their major temples, she had to go find the information and we learned how to vet sources. Without my teachers, no, I wouldn't have been able to accomplish for virtual school because, well, first of all, at the end of every module, like at the end of every lesson, you have to call your teacher. Teacher, you have to call your teacher, and they give you an oral exam where you're on the phone, and you can have your notes in front of you, or you can have the lesson pulled up in front of you on a computer, and they really just ask you like. 
three to five questions about like what you learned and like test questions. Um, so, um, no, I wouldn't have been able to accomplish FLBS without teachers for the oral assessment reasons, but also because um, if I ever didn't understand anything, then I would call it anything. One of the reasons that I was on board when my family and I talked about this is, I think this is preparing students for the way that they're going to have to learn in the future. The classroom structure, you know, I'm not an educator, but I've done a lot of reading and I went through this system and it worked for me. Like I was a minor student, I got a scholarship to college and all of that really worked, but that doesn't work for a lot. And I watched some peers either fail, fail out or not have the skills or sort of that adaptability that they need to work online. And the whole notion of working online, working remotely, working via teleconference with someone in China. This just, no one even talked about this when I was in school and that was 15 years ago. And so I felt like when I had this opportunity with my niece that children today are going to be working in a world that we can't even fathom. And so keeping an education system that's rooted in something that's decades and decades old isn't serving them, where this may not be the answer completely. It may look like something different, but it's certainly a step. Like my niece had to learn how to adapt to a different way of working, not only with her teachers in the US, but to get, get, how to gather information that was completely different than the school system in the United States was giving her. And I think that's going to serve her incredibly well in the future, for the future that not nobody here can say it's going to happen in 12 years when she's looking for a job.